up everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about working with shapes and also smart guides. So on my left hand side here I have a screenshot that I took from Pinterest. Pinterest is a great place to look for inspiration when you're uh, working on mobile apps, websites, things like that. This one in particular came from uh, thirstydevs.com. It's something they created. Check them out. You might like some of that stuff. What I'm doing today is I'm going to take this screen and I'm just going to recreate some basic shapes over here in my little iPhone. It's not an artboard. I created a custom one just to have this kind of same border here. And we're going to go through just creating some basic shapes because the majority of what you're going to be doing in Sketch is creating shapes and applying different colors and designs to those shapes. You're going to do a lot, a lot, a lot of it. So the, the more you're familiar with it, the better. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to recreate everything from this design. I'm just going to kind of pick apart shapes here and there and show you how I went about creating them so you get a little more familiar. Then we'll go through some more examples in other, uh, other designs that I found. So let's start here at the top and let's grab this guy here. Now one of the things I like to do when I'm recreating or drawing things and creating designs is I like smart guides. They're very, very helpful. So if I want to know where to place this, uh, it's very helpful to place smart guides so I know I have the size right, things like that. So let's get this shape right here. I'm going to go ahead and place a smart guide right at the bottom. And let's zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to hit command on my keyboard and just kind of roll the mouse forward and zoom in. And repositioning, I'm just hitting the space bar and then clicking and dragging it around. All right, so for this shape here, let's just draw right on top of it. I'm going to hit R for rectangle. And I'm going to start up here. I'm going to click and drag and draw that out. And when you hit the bottom, it'll snap right to that smart guide, another helpful feature of that smart guide. I'm going to drop the opacity down just so I can see through it. And what I want to do is I want to see this curve right here. I can zoom in just a little bit more. I want to see this curve right here. And dropping the opacity lets me do that. I can drop it a little bit more. Now I'm going to double click. And I have my points here. Now I can manipulate uh, the edges. So I'll click this first one here, and what I want is to give it that rounded edge. I'll come over here to the inspector, and I'll up the radius, and as I do that, you'll see that the curve starts to get even more curved. I'll go until I like where it's at. I'll say about 24. I'll go to the other side, click on this point, and just apply 24 as well. Hit Enter. Now it does look a little bit off, so maybe I'll click off and I'll click and drag this in just a little bit and that looks better. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the opacity back up. We'll zoom out and reposition here. I'll grab this guy, bring him over, make sure he's centered. The smart guide is going to tell me when I'm in the center here by this vertical smart guide that pops up there. Very helpful. Now I drew it a little bit bigger so you see it's dropping below the smart guide. Let's go ahead and bring that up just a little bit so it overlaps and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go over here to the inspector, choose fills, click in there. And just so it matches the black that I used for this border, let's get the color picker and click in there. Now it matches no problemo. Okay, when you're done with the smart guide, you have a couple different options. You can right click choose remove all horizontal guides or one thing I like to do as well click and drag up to the top and then it makes that little poof sound which is <laughs> very satisfying alright now I'm gonna draw these guys out I've got the, the earpiece and the camera and I can put a smart guide there just because so top and bottom for the earpiece so roughly that's where it is I'm gonna zoom in get repositioned here and I'm gonna go with uh, a rectangle so I'll hit R for rectangle on my keyboard I'll draw it out right over here I'd say it's roughly about that maybe a little bit bigger I'm gonna put some rounded corners on here I'm not gonna double click this time because I want it to be applied to uh, all four corners so I'll come back over here to the inspector this time I'm gonna use the up and down arrows I'll click the up arrows and I'll do it to about 4.5 4.5 is good alright I'm happy with that I'm gonna drag it over here I'm gonna get it centered in my design now to give it that same kind of effect I'm just gonna drop the opacity down so I can see through it a bit 
right about there. Maybe a little bit more. That's good. Now I'm going to reuse these smart guides for the camera. The little camera oval there. I'll drop it down just a little bit. And then up. I'll hit O on my keyboard for oval so I can draw out an oval. I'm going to position myself right at the top smart guide. I'm going to hold down shift so I can draw out a proportional circle. If I let go of shift, then it just gets all wonky and I don't want that. So I'm going to hold down shift and we'll get it right there. And it'll snap to those smart guides. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to bring this over here. Drop it down right there. Now you'll notice when I dropped it, I can't see it anymore. So for some reason, it's behind this shape. So what I want to do is come over here in my layers panel. It's good that you see this because when you, this happens to you later, you freak out like, well, where's my stuff? I'm going to click that and just drag it to the top. And now I can see it again. Okay, so now I'm going to take the opacity. I'm going to drop it down to the same value. Let's click back over to this guy. I set that to 27%. Let's just go straight to 27%. And I'm getting all these notifications. Uh, drop this down to 27%. There we go. And if you want to get super detailed, you can do that inside Black Ring as well. Let's click over here. Let's hit Command D to duplicate that. I'm going to zoom way in, reposition. Now there's another circle right on top of it. I'm going to grab the corner here. I'm going to hold down Alt Shift. Holding down Alt Shift lets me resize it. And just so you can see it a little bit better, let's turn this one black. And if I just click and drag without holding anything down, it's just going to resize up into the corner, and I don't want that. Okay, Command Z. What I want is for all sides to resize and shrink uh, all together towards the center. So holding down Alt Shift will let me do that. And I'll click that until it gets about there. I'm going to bring the opacity up just a tiny bit so it's a little bit darker. That's good. Let's zoom out. Let's reposition. Let's get rid of our smart guides. I'm going to hold. I'm going to right-click, remove all horizontal guides. Let's click off that guy. Looks good. All right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. Now let's get a few more shapes going here. So I'm going to start by. I'm going to get these these circular kind of things in the background. Right now, the only shape I have here uh, for my background is this uh, inside white background. Over here in my layers panel, you'll see it's called Inside BG. Remember that because we're going to use it in a little bit. So let's let's start with this big guy over here first. I'm going to draw a pretty big circle, so I'm going to hit O for oval on my keyboard, and just kind of eyeballing it. It looks like the bottom of the circle is about right here because you can see it on the left side, and it just kind of keeps on going up over here. So we'll try to recreate something like that. I'm going to look for maybe the middle point, about right there. I'm going to hold down Alt-Shift. Now Alt-Shift again uh, for this has another purpose. When I click and drag, it's going to start drawing right from the center there until I let go. So now, what would have been good if I placed a smart guide here, so I know where the bottom of it is over here on the left. And I'll take my circle here move it right to the bottom there and I want the bottom of that circle to be hitting kind of right of it right at its middle point right there all right I'm also gonna want this right side kind of over here covering that let's move that up just a little bit all right so I'm good there now I want to manipulate this I don't want this whole circle so there's a lot of different ways to do this this is just one way that I'm going to do it I'm gonna drop down the opacity first I'm going to double click to put this in edit mode. I'm going to place another point right here so it's kind of in line with the top here. I'll place another point right about here so it's in line with this left edge. And then I'll go to these guys over here, these points. I'll click on it and just hit delete. Scroll up to the top. Click this point, delete. Now what I want to do, just so these are a little bit, a little bit tighter, I'm going to click on this point and I'm going to change the, the point type to straight. So I've got this one as straight. Let's make this guy straight. I'll add a new point here. Just by moving my cursor there, you see the little plus sign with the vector drawing tool. I'll click the point 
and drag it up to the top, right about there, or maybe about want a little bit higher. I'm going to make this a straight point as well, and then let's adjust the rest of these. Something like that, and like that. Let's hit enter. All right, now there's our shape. What I want to do now is I want to cut it so that it's the exact uh, size of the inside uh, portion of this background. So right now I have this shape. I'm going to bring the opacity up. I'm going to click on my inside background. Let's go ahead and get rid of our smart guide here. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a Boolean operation. But in order to do that Boolean operation, I want another copy of this inside layer. So let's hit Command D. We're going to duplicate that inside layer. So now we have two. If you look over here in the layers panel, we've got our original right here inside BG. And then we've got inside BG copy. And right above that, we have our custom little oval here. So as I hover over that, you see that the blue lines are around our, our custom shape over there. So I'm going to make sure that one's on top. I'll hold down Shift and select that guy. Now what I want, the Boolean operation that I want, is I want to keep just what's touching between these two layers. So I've got the inside layer and I've got this guy, and all I want to keep is the parts of those two layers that are touching. I don't want anything down here. I don't want anything that goes outside of that point. So I'm going to choose Intersect right here. There we go. Now I turn white. You can't really see it right now. But we're going to go ahead and mimic this color right here. In the Layers panel, you'll see that now I have this thing called Combine Shape. And if I click the down arrow, I've got my original oval, and I've got my inside background copy. And let's go ahead and apply some color to this, make it look nice. I'll choose my fill. I'm going to do a gradient. Now, just looking at this, I feel like the gradient's going from the lower left to the upper right. And I say that because it's got a lighter, kind of yellow orangish color right here. That lighter yellow orangish color is not up here, it's more dark and it's a lot darker up here in the corner. So in terms of my reference points, I'm going to put one down here in the lower left. I'm going to put the other one up here in the upper right. So with that first point selected at the top, I'll get my color picker here, my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to pick a dark color that I like. And then let's go ahead and choose this bottom reference point right here. Let's get our color picker. Let's choose kind of a yellowish, yellow orangish right there. There we go. Now that's looking pretty good. It's going to look a lot more crisp than what we have over here because this one's a little bit pixelated just because I, I increased the size for this, uh, this demo. Alright, now let's do the same thing for this, this over here. And if you're following along in Sketch, why don't you try to do that just on your own and see if you can do it. If not, let's try to tackle that right now. So let's say the middle point is about right there. I'm going to hit O for oval on my keyboard. Let's just draw out a circle here. I'm going to hold down Alt-Shift again. It doesn't have to be precise, but let's try to get it pretty close. Something like that. And we'll notice that it starts leaving the design right where the curve starts, about there. We can drop down the opacity so we can see that. So there's where it kind of leaves the design. And the other, I can drop a smart guide here for the other point where it kind of leaves. So it's definitely a lot smaller here. I'm going to, it's kind of jumping over on my other artboard over here. Let's move this guy over so it's not in the way. It's not affecting our design. Let's go there. Maybe something like that. And because it's not a perfect circle, we can double click. Maybe bring this in a little bit. It's a little ugly like that, but that's kind of what it is. All right, so now before we go any further, we're going to cut this shape. Let's bring the opacity back up. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Uh, I've got the main background. I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate that again. So in my layers panel, I have my inside BG copy 2. And then I've got my oval over here, which is all the way at the top. So let's hold down uh, Shift. Those two layers selected again. I'm going to choose Intersect so I can keep just the parts that are touching. And now I've got my combined shape over here in the Layers panel. I'll take that. Right now it's behind and it's also white. Let's start by dragging this above the other combined shape because it's in front of this one. I'm going to get rid of my Smart Guides. Let's right click. 
remove all horizontal guides. Let's choose the fill color. And for this one, it looks a little more solid. It could be a gradient. I'm not sure, I'm just gonna keep it solid color. Uh, I'm gonna get my color picker here. Let's choose this. That one is done. All right, good stuff. Let's move on to more of our design. So now we've got this rectangle here, and we wanna put that into our design. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle. Before I do that, let's play some smart guides so we know where it's going. So there's a smart guide at the top. Here's a smart guide at the bottom. I'm gonna hit R for rectangle, and let's go ahead and draw one out. Try to get the, the amount here, and it looks like it's pretty far down there. And it's got kind of a weird shape down here at the bottom where this part is kind of cut off. It's a little weird. I think I'm just gonna do the exact same thing as what they did at the top here, just to make it a little bit easier. And before I do that, let's click on this inside background layer. I'm gonna change that to not black, but kind of a, a dark gray color. Let's go for something about like that. I'll get this guy. Let's put a radius on here. So I'm gonna click the up arrow on radius. And if you wanna compare, let's zoom in a bit. We've got this edge here, and we've got this edge here. And as we zoom, as we click this little up arrow, let's go with 11. Zoom back out. That right about there and actually it looks like it's a little bit more I'm just gonna go let's go 15 it's good I'm gonna change the color of this to a white all right so we have our shape and if you look over at this one here you'll notice that there's a slight transparency so they did drop the opacity a bit and we'll do that I'll go ahead and drop the opacity down till it's close to that other side I'm gonna say it's a little bit less than that and I think there might be a little bit of blur applied there because it does look a little bit blurry. This is very crisp. Details are important, so I'm gonna click blur, and I'm gonna do background blur. All right, so I just realized I don't wanna drop the opacity down. Let's bring that back up to 100. We have the blur on there. What I wanna do is drop the alpha here. That's what I really wanna do. Get it to about that, and let's drop the blur down. Let's test this out. I think I want it up near like 10. And it's probably good. Something like that. We drop the opacity down just a little bit more. Maybe not too much. I think something like that. Maybe 82% is good. All right, a couple more shapes. We have this uh, profile picture here. I'm going to hit R for rectangle on my keyboard. Let's get right about in the center here. I'll hit Alt Shift. We'll draw one out. Get something roughly accurate like that. Let's apply a radius get it to about where it is, and we can drop the opacity down so we can see behind it. I don't think we really need to do that. Pretty happy with that right there. Let's get this centered. And if we want, we can drop a smart guide right on the top there. Let's drag this up. All right, I'm gonna bring the opacity back up. And really quickly, we can use one of these other tools up here in data. Let's go sketch data and faces. All right, so right now, if you look over here at the fills, I have tile selected. I don't want tile. Let's go ahead and just hit uh, fit, get it something like that. All right, I'm good there. All right, now let's go ahead and copy this button here down at the bottom. We can drop some smart guides in on both sides. Hit R for rectangle. Draw this out roughly about the size. Let's apply just a color, basic color right now. I'm gonna give it a radius so that it's more of a pill shape. I'm gonna drag that all the way over to 25.5. And I'll probably drop the shape down just a tiny bit. And that's about what it is right there. And it's got kind of an orange, orange tint to it, so let's get the color picker, let's choose the orange, and there's our button. So there you go. Let's get rid of our smart guides. Remove all vertical, remove all horizontal. So there we are, just recreated this. Not the whole thing, but a lot of the basic shapes that are within this design. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to another one. I'll show you a few more, but just a quick example of how to recreate things within a design just using some really basic shapes.